My name is Bobby Bellflower. Today we're going to talk about necrotizing enterocolitis, or NEC as we all know it. There are no conflicts of interest. These are our objectives. We want to identify the causes of NEC and discuss causes and prevention of NEC. NEC is the most common GI medical surgical emergency occurring in newborns. It's an acute inflammatory disease with a multifactorial etiology. It's characterized by variable damage to the intestinal tract ranging from mucosal injury to full thickness necrosis and perforation. 10% of babies who weigh less than 1,500 grams will develop NEC. 10 to 12% of all babies less than 1,000 grams will develop NEC. The overall mortality for NEC greater than or equal to stage two is about 25%. And as we all know, it's most common in premature babies. 90% of NEC cases are in preterm babies. Babies that weigh less than one kilo are the most vulnerable to NEC, but it can be observed in term and near-term babies. The two most common factors associated with NEC, prematurity, 90% of all cases of NEC are premature babies, and formula feeding, 90% of all cases of NEC are associated with formula. There are various clinical and radiographic signs and symptoms that are used to make the diagnosis, but the classic clinical radiological signs consist of abdominal distension, bloody stools, and pneumatosis intestinalis. NEC causes, research suggests that NEC is multifactorial. Ischemia reperfusion injury, which is exacerbated by activation of pro-inflammatory intracellular cascades, essentially the toe-like receptor four system. Blood transfusions may cause it. 30% of NEC is associated with blood transfusions. There's an infectious etiology. It includes gram-positive bacteria, gram-negative bacteria, viruses, and fungi. There's a normal intestinal flora, which may be caused by antibiotics that can change the intestinal milieu. Intestinal mucosal immaturity that's present in preterm babies. There may be an innate genetic predisposition for NEC, and there are some medications that may cause NEC, specifically indomethacin and ranitidine. Prevention of NEC, the number one thing that we should do to prevent NEC is to use breast milk only to feed our babies. Exclusive human milk diet decreases NEC in the most vulnerable of babies, babies that weigh less than one kilo. We should use donor breast milk if the mother's milk is not available. We should use human milk-based fortifiers. We should use probiotics. There is some question as to what kind and what dose, and it's important to remember that probiotics are not FDA regulated. They are food additives and not a drug. We should use standardized feeding protocols and advance feeding slowly. We should avoid unnecessary use of antibiotics. We should ask ourselves if they are needed and for how long they are needed. We should avoid unnecessary and prolonged use of H2 blockers. These alter the pH. And we should make babies NPO during transfusions. There's some question as to how long before and after the transfusion a baby should be NPO. We should seek to minimize blood loss so that we don't have to give as many transfusions. And these are our references. Thank you for listening.